Hello everyone, Manthrall here, and welcome to the weekly update video, and yes, I did say weekly update video for OSRS. Now, at the very end, I'll explain as to the good news about why the OSRS is starting to have updates again, as well as RS3 starting to have o updates again, potentially this Monday. So, there's a lot to go over today as far as updates go. There's actually a ton of updates, so <laughs> keep that in mind. Uh, right out the gate, though, they have issues and hot fixes, and this is labeled as 17th of March. Um, issues raises that reports of telescopes not work with the shooting stars content in the following house styles the Twisted, Assidious, and Christmas. At 1140 GMT, reports of the Corporal Beast not giving players combat XP. And at 1145 GMT, uh, reports of players world hopping and crashing other players at Corp leaving them unable to fight. <clears throat> However, the current process is <clears throat> players with all hot fi uh, all, all house styles can use a telescope, so that was fixed within 20 minutes. Um, and a hot fix, uh, players will now receive combat XP when fighting the Corporal Beast. Again, that was fixed within 20 minutes. Uh, the current is that the timer has been reduced from 10 minutes to 3 minutes make finding an open world easier uh, the timer has been reduced from 10 minutes to 3 minutes okay so that was actually just a repeat but they have that incorporated as a current response to the reports of players world hopping and crashing other players at corp leaving them unable to fight so that was the response to that so as far as updates go we have something old and new coming to us which is the shooting star so if you're not familiar with the shooting star it is a bunch of mining xp that can essentially be mined and gathered at random times throughout the day um so this is <laughs> I, I find it funny that they're using this terminology since it's already at rs3 uh but they're one of the new types of activity they're calling is distraction and diversion which is what it is for rs3 so it is not being considered a mini game though they just want to clarify that so this is how this essentially works so there is a well they say star hunter is born uh which is essentially it's you so in order to actually kind of hunt these down unless you want to come across them randomly is that in your player and house uh, in I believe the library room you can make a telescope and within that telescope there is the oak teak and mahogany the oak uh, the time frame of when the star will actually crash is actually only about 24 minutes so the example says here it will land in the feminine lands or the lunar aisle in the next 5 to 29 minutes so it's kind of a big gap uh, the teak one is a nine minute range so if the example is this the Fremenic Isles or Lunar Isle in the next six to fifteen minutes and the mahogany really drops it down saying that it will be appearing in the next eight to ten minutes so obviously you want the mahogany because that is going to really drastically help you out and the landing site will appear to be like a meteor sitting in the ground there is going to be different tiers uh, uh, before we get to that uh, so there is going to be free to play stars and there's going to be uh, the regular you know uh, P2P uh, pay to play servers uh, so uh, you don't have access to the telescope in a free to play so that is kind of a short stall, uh, short stick of that uh, but they still may land in you know free to play worlds um, stars may still land in non free to play areas on free to play worlds, so rendering them out of reach that is unfortunate, but it is potential there. Uh, stars will offer 50% of the usual value of on free to play worlds, so it is reduced. And as the reward shop is not available, XP will be the only benefit. However, Stardust in the next section will still be given free to play worlds. Um, so it's a good idea to save it up ready to be used when you're out to decide to become a member so unlike the rs3 variant 
it's actually been improved upon where you can actually just save up your stardust. Uh, once a star has landed is ready to be mined, uh, the landing times of the last five stars will also be listed on the board of the observatory along with the names of the players that found them. So kind of a little bit of fun. So there's nine different sizes of the star. Each has a different mining level requirement and a cumulative of size of 10. So a rank one, or well, size one will be level 10, size two is level 20, size three is level 30, and so on and so forth. So every time some stardust is mined, mining XP will also be rewarded. And the stardust is an untradeable currency that can be used to purchase a variety of untradeable rewards, which is actually going to be very good here, and I'll go over that in a second here. <clears throat> so, the star sizes are, you know, the size is 9, but here's the uh, thing that you keep in mind, is that a size 9 has 15 dust available, and it has 168 XP per dust. Uh, 8 is... 40 dust available, 116 dust, and size 7 is 40 dust available, 91 XP per dust, 6 is 80 dust available, 57 XP, 5 is 175 dust at 38 XP, 4 is 250 dust at 26 XP, and 3 is 430 dust at 23 XP. And two is 700 dust at 20 XP, and one is 1200 dust at 11 XP. So keep that in mind. So, so in addition to all this lovely XP that you can get, you can also find the reward shop at, with the Surrey, a door found in Falador just outside of the mining guild. So. He will trade items. He appears on both free to play and pay, play to play. Uh, so one of the things that he has is a celestial ring hidden in the, uh, has a hitting mining boost of plus four when worn. This stacks with other invisible boosts. It will also be chargeable with Stardust. So each Stardust will add one charge up to a maximum of 10,000 charges. Uh, when charged, the ring will have a 1 in 10 chance of giving extra ore when mining, and this extra ore will reward the normal amount of XP when mined. Extra ore can emerge at any rock where the mining skill cave has a chance of giving it. Every time it is ore mined from a suitable rock, a charge will be lost from the ring. So, <clears throat> obviously, this is going to be a very, very good way to mine your ore. <clears throat> I mean, 1 in 10 chances is still pretty low, but still, it's pretty good. Uh, the ring can also be combined with the Elven Signet to create the Celestial Signet, which grants players the effects of both items. That's rather good. This will require 70 crafting and 70 smithing, 100 crystal shards, and 1000 stardust. Players with the re without the requirements can pay Conwenna or Reese and extra 50 crystal shards to combine the items for them. Now, this process is not reversible, so once you combine them, that's that. But overall, it's kind of worth it if you ask me. The star fragments, however, can be used uh, with the Prospector outfit to recolor specific pieces of gold. So you can recolor your Prospector outfits into a more golden fashion. There's a bag full of gems. Uh, it's again, it's a mystery bag, just like before with other places. And then you got the soft clay pack, which is a hundred soft pieces of clay. So that's pretty good. The bolt pouch got an update today after some polling, and it says you no longer need to right click an item in the pouch to remove it. You simply left click slash tap uh, to wear bolts from the pouch, just drag and drop them into the current ammo slot. Uh, there is a new slot in pouch called Extra Ammo in your Worn Equipment tab above your normal ammo. You can left click uh, slash tab to switch between your Worn Bolts and your Extra Bolts without opening the pouch itself. Fewer clicks to switch ammo, which is pretty nice. 
The bowl pouch now works similarly to the items in my room pouch. Upon your character's death, the bolt pouch uh, can be picked up and stored with the stored bolts emptied into the gravestone. If the player dies during PVM and below level 20 wilderness, the bolt pouch contents are emptied into gravestones and the bolt pouch is preserved. If the player dies during PVM but the level is 20 wilderness, above level 20 wilderness, the pouch is destroyed and the contents emptied into the gravestone. When a PvP death, the pouch is destroyed and a coin is given to the player, along with the, all the bolts. So keep that in mind, people. If the pouch is destroyed, you'll be able to pick up another one from Kirko, uh, Herko and Keldegrim. The following items can now be added to the bolt pouch, grapple, one per slot, and bolt racks. There's also some pole 74 changes. The following demon-like monsters have been add tagged as demon. Blood Belts, which is all variants, Ice Fiends, Imps, Water Fiends, Pyre Fiends, Pyre Lords, Horazder, uh, most Hellhound types, which is unique Hellhounds like Cerberus and Bouncer are included in this, Undead Hellhounds, such as the Skeletal and Ghost, etc., are not included. Something to kind of keep in mind, there's now a small chance of receiving Bird's Egg Nest when emptying a whole bird house. Uh, the Thermonuclear Smoke Devil has reduced chance of dropping Tinderbox, Bullseye Lanterns, Pure Essence, and Kebabs. <coughs> they also now have a tertiary roll for the Jar of Smoke, which is the third roll. Players coming now make Dark Flippers, visit Patchy the Pirate and Mostly Harmless to combine the Dark Claw from Scott uh, Scotizo and flippers from Magras. Corporal Beast has had some changes. So, when the Corporal Beast begins additionally, uh, additional heal regeneration group sizes of 8 or more, this now scales from a lower base value. Additionally, the Corporal Beast will no longer award loot to Iron players if it has attacked another player. <coughs> if this happens, you'll be able to tell because the Brazier will be lit outside. Uh, so you will be able to know that if it's worth going into or not. <coughs> this was to better implement the force or enforce the Iron Man mode, which is about solo play. So do keep that in mind. It's not to punish anybody, but it's this way people can't kind of cheese it. Uh, in addition to this, the Corporal Beast will be reset. If it, if it has neither attacked nor been attacked by another player for three minutes, which is kind of a safe mode anyway, the Corporal Beast now has a third role for the Jar of Spirits. Castle Wars got some love today. So, <clears throat> back in November, they proposed some changes for Castle Wars, which are potion supply tables have been placed in the starting room for each respective game on Castle Wars. A new notification has been added to the game directing players to Castle War Worlds. Players can no longer trade members of opposite team. Uh, players may no longer hop worlds and rejoin Castle Wars games. Logging in and out in the same world remains unaffected. Also we have some clan hall concepts. So they do want to have some clan halls added into the game with the clan system. Uh, so they do have three different options um, for the theme. Potentially, you know, these could eventually all may end up making it anyway, but to start out, uh, they want to know people's feedback. They have the Crystalline, which is the Elven theme. There is the Gothic, which is Dark Mire kind of theme, so Vampiric. And then they finally have the traditional medieval style, so the human type uh, ones right here <clears throat> honestly they all look kind of similar to me except for like maybe the railing is a little bit different and some of the decor sitting around is a little bit different and the portal entrances of course is a little bit different <clears throat> so there's going to be a in-game poll for us to let them know what we like the most also, we have some merch, which is RuneScape the first 20 uh, years arrives in a comic shops and bookstores October 5th of 2021. And it's 
available for pre-order now through Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and your local comic shops and bookstores. And in other news, we have the PvP World Rota has moved to period B. The host for the high-risk PvP world will be 337 US East. The standard PvP world is 325 UK. The free-to-play PvP world is 371 UK. The members only LMS was 492 US East. And the free-to-play LMS is 326 UK. There is also some smaller changes going on. The hashtag Sixes Challenge competition is now closed, and they want to thank everybody who participated. Uh, they are going to review all entries carefully and announcing the winners in the near future. Players may now opt out of dropping food and potions as a supply pile on death, sending them to the gravestone instead. The new toggle is in the gameplay tab in the settings menu. Uh, special attack energy will now restore when the player enters a new JAD challenge, dropping to the level it was at prior to entering. The value zeal items has increased so that they will protect over bones upon death. A new setting has been adjusted to optionally separate personal best into hours. Uh, the party in Lumbridge is over boo. And the monkeys have returned to a patrol. Our eighth birthday event has now been removed from the game, so we'll see, they'll see us next year. Plus, the Tizahar cats have shrunk a little so that they can be one tile NPCs as they used to be, but without the graphical bugs they had before. You can now right click, or you can now click the jar generator more rapidly to get additional jars. Uh, yet some grammar has been corrected in the Hollowed uh, and the Inferno. A spelling error has been fixed on the Swamp Bark and Blood Bark gauntlets. So there was a lot, like I said, a lot to go over today. And as for the last little tidbit, uh, when this comes to the good news as far as the logout, well, login issue, the login error, uh, Jaggets has actually already moved into the beta phase, and starting tomorrow, they are going to lock <coughs> uh, some of these accounts out to make sure that, you know, nothing bad happens to them. Um, well, not those accounts, but they're going to be locking some accounts that were affected that, you know, do have some stuff missing so they could restore those accounts as well. So it's looking that the overall login fix is soon coming uh, so people who are still being affected don't fret it is soon coming to an end and uh, they did say it in a live stream those who have been affected especially in a great detail are going to be compensated for this um, they did not say how yet i do think they have an idea of what they plan on doing but currently uh, nothing was actually mentioned because they want to make sure they get everything done and squared away and then they can figure out the appropriate you know compensation for the time amount uh, it's like I told somebody before uh, this was on the social media if they would have quoted let's say you know they let's say they thought they were gonna have it done within a week um, they could have been like oh hey we'll give everybody who has been affected by this uh, one week free membership you know, that, that's something they could have said, but then it ended up taking more than a week. Then they could have had some backlash from that, and then there would have been people more upset because they'd be like, oh, well, we're only getting one week out of two weeks. And, you know, there, there could have been a lot more of a backlash from that. Whereas they said that they will address compensation. So that is why there's not really a defined what they are going to be doing because they want to make sure that the compensation is justified by the amount of time and gameplay that has been missed so that that's why there's a delay you know they have to make sure the compensation fits for what has happened to each individual person otherwise it could be unfair to either them or to you know the players that are affected and it, overall they are a company and they want to make money obviously uh, but they also do care about their players and their, um, well, basically everybody involved. Uh, they do care about everybody involved, but they have to make sure things are fair, and that's what they're going to do. 
And it's like I also told somebody too, you know, with jackets, they're not necessarily a big company. They're not a AAA company. They're not EA. They're not Bethesda. They're not Microsoft. You know, they're not a big name company. They are big, but they're still technically, you know, a small company. And, you know, if they had ended up getting bad publicity from, you know, fixing this, having this issue, number one, but then fixing the issue and then not compensating their players for it, it could have a very large negative impact. Whereas a company like, let's say, Bethesda, where they release a pile of crap, uh, which I know some people uh, feel quite heavily about some of their games, uh, they don't care. You know, like, well, they might care, but it's not going to completely devastate them, so they might try to fix it if, a little bit if they can, but they're not going to go um, to the extent that a smaller company like Jaggets would do. So that's something to kind of keep in mind. But that's actually it for this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, later guys.